just arrived in central Otago, New Zealand. First stop, Felton Road. Excellent Pinot Noirs, Chardonnays, and also a big surprise. I, I haven't had your Rieslings, but great Rieslings. I'm here with my winemaker, uh, Blair uh, Walter. So, Blair, tell me, uh, great wines. You know, I've met you in London before, but it's great to be here and, and taste a range of wines. Talk a little bit about the style or character of this region, because it's very special for New Zealand. Well, yeah, it is unique. I mean, we are in the southern part of the South Island of New Zealand. Um, interestingly, for central Otago, um, is that we are the furthest that you can possibly be from the ocean. So we enjoy a semi-continental effect, as opposed to the other regions of New Zealand, which are all have a maritime influence with the you know the cool breezes coming off the the cool southern ocean. So we have this um, inland mountain basin, uh, with very high mountains around us, up to two, two and a half thousand meters, um, whereas our altitude is only around 600 meters. And so we have these you know, quite hot daytime temperatures, but very, very cool nighttime, so that the, the character of the wine is, is really sealed in by this um, uh, the cool nighttime temperatures, giving the wines a you know, really good depth of, of color and flavor um, and really good vibrancy and freshness to the fruit character and a good acidity, of course. How do you compare your Pinot Noir uh, from this area to other areas like uh, Martinborough or Marlborough? Or um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the style of Pinot Noir across the New Zealand regions, you know, of course, um, you know, we're separated um, by you know, several hundred kilometers. So, um, but there's interesting dynamics that happen according to you know the the weather systems that you get and the protection that you get from the you know the cool ocean sea breezes. So while we're so much further south and arguably should be cooler, we are um, away from the ocean, so we have a warm daytime temperatures, cool nights. So that has a um, um, you know a different ripening curve to it, let's say compared to Martinborough, Marlborough. And so while we might have um, Interestingly, a, a richer fruit character, even though we're supposedly cooler, we have this darker, richer fruit character. Um, the other regions can have a, a perhaps a more savory character. You know, certainly in Martinborough, that's a common descriptor that they have more savory, more uh, um, perhaps complex, earthier characters. Yeah, maybe, Whereas we we have this you know quite um, rich fruit character, almost sometimes to a fault. So that as our role as winemakers here is to perhaps look at the opportunity to build you know complexity into the wines, which is a lovely platform to be working from, rather than sort of from the opposite way, trying to look for the fruit and look for the uh, sort of softness and the supple. So so you uh, wines. worked in California in Napa at Newton. I know you specialize in making Chardonnay. Compare Napa Chardonnay to Central Otago or even New Zealand. Oh, just, just to sort of simple... Uh, it was a, a dramatic contrast, you know, coming back after making wines there. Um, you know, you, you're dealing with a much warmer climate, much lower acidity, much bolder, heavier fruit characters. It can support a lot more oak, can su support the alcohol. And I, you know, looking back now at the wines, um, you know, I can completely understand the direction that they, they take there because they, they're optimizing, you know, their conditions. Coming back here, it was, you know, it was a real shock to have to work to, you know, much higher acidities, you know, leaner tighter wines and really focusing on that but you know you um, just have to get inspired by drinking some great bottles from from the old world and realize that that it's certainly not a negative um, we do have the opportunity to have you know wines that are more sort of old world sort of classic expression in them and Riesling I'm, I was really impressed with the Rieslings you seem to be able to get lots of lots of character but keeping them even though there's residual sugar there they almost taste dry yeah, it's a surprising um, thing that, that we can bury that much sugar in the Rieslings and have, you know, um, Rieslings, you know, New World Rieslings with only eight and a half, nine, nine and a half percent alcohol and, and, and lose a lot of residual, you know, um, from us, you know, we just stop the fermentation when we see the balance um, with the residual sugar and the acidity. Um, come into that, you know, real nice knife edge point and it, it, again, you know, the cool climate, the cool nighttime temperatures, you just give you that laser precision, um, like is acidity to the wines. So, how do you feel as a winemaker? There's so there's a really big future. There's so much more to do. Do you feel sort of limitless? <laughs> 
Well, yeah, look, we're, the vines are still young. You know, the, our oldest vines are just turning 20 years old this year. So, we're, you know, we're fairly, fairly excited by, you know, the, the prospect that we have, you know, as, the, as we get increasing vine age and also as we gain more experience from vintage to vintage and dealing with the different vintage conditions because, you know, every year we have one. I haven't seen a vintage like this before. Uh-huh. So we've got to learn new things and apply from what we've learned in, in previous vintages. And um, so, yeah, there's certainly a lot more potential. Um, uh, we're very excited by it. Well, thank you very much for the taste and great to be here. No worries. Thanks for coming all the way to see us in Central Otago. Mm-hmm.